Hey everyone, do you need to know how to set up your budget and your sinking funds, your debt snowball, cash envelopes, making sure you got that zero base budget and everything in its place? Then go ahead and stick around. I'm gonna show you how to do that today. All right, let's go ahead and get straight into it. We're gonna go ahead and do a plan with me of my budget for December from start to finish. If you need to make a budget or you wanna revamp it to get your budget all set or simply use this as motivation to get your budget all set for the month of December, then you're in the right place. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Laura from Lime and Joy and I'm a wife, a medical coder and a mom of six and I'm on a journey to become debt free and break generational cycles of debt so the next generation can live and give like they were meant to. So if I interest you, then stick around and hit that subscribe button to be part of the Lime and Joy community and hit give it a thumbs up so others can find this video more easily and be able to find their budgeting and freedom journey as well. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna actually pull the pages out of here, but before I do, I just wanna explain a little bit about my planner because um, it's kind of changed over time. But my new planner will have the 2024 update. It's gonna be in my um, website that's linked below. It all comes with a yearly planner. It's gonna have the budget overview for you to do. I have two budget overviews, one for one of my bank and bills and one for my other bank and bills. And then it's also going to have all the budgeting sheets that you're going to see today. So let me go ahead and pull these out really quickly. All right, I got all the pages pulled out from my uh, planner and that way we can just kind of work with them a little more freely. And I wanna show you kind of how I set up my monthly you know, pages in my planner. So first off, I have my calendar monthly breakdown. I just go ahead and number them and put where my paychecks are going to be coming in. Um, I have the monthly budget after that breakdown and then the debt snowball cash envelope sinking fund, that whole breakdown. So that is my three monthly pages that I'm going to start with today. Then I cash stuff three times a month. I have five paychecks. I combo two of them twice. So with that three times, so however many times you do it, that's how many times it'd be a good idea to have your uh, cash envelope breakdown for your cash stuffings. I'd like to do the weekly planner um, before I do that. And then I do that by paycheck. So I've done it by monthly, now I do it by paycheck. And I just have three sets of those, the planner weekly, and the budget by paycheck, again, the planner weekly, and the budget by paycheck. And then at the end of that, I have my expense trackers. You could use this for just writing down all of your expenses. I'm kind of an online person when it comes to this, but I do do many little closeouts where I'll put you know, the first week dates, the second week dates, third weeks, and so on. And then I'll do groceries, gasoline, and extras. I will show you that as well. Um, and then for closeout, I just have my closeout sheet and my ideas and thoughts. And at the end of the month, I pair that with my monthly budget that I started the month with. Um, and I kind of use those to close out my month. So those are the all the pages that I print every time and make sure that I have them to plan my entire budget for the month, okay? So starting off where I would start off here is the calendar. We're looking at the month of December here. So I'm just gonna highlight that. And I've already labeled the days and now I just wanna kind of think about an overview of my month. What do we have? Of course we have special occasions, we have Christmas. Um, I celebrate that here in my house. And a couple other things, I have some Christmas parties to go to, work parties, and that is going to be over here, Christmas parties. Um, another really fun, amazing thing is, um, a unique things to consider is my um, second oldest is coming home from college um, for the holidays so that she's flying in here. Um, and I am super excited and so is she. She is definitely like my, my baker and uh, she's always gathering the kids together and cooking something in the kitchen. And so I've missed that atmosphere that she brings. It's so much different when even just one is missing from the group, right? You ever have a family get together and that one person's missing? It's totally 
uh, feels strange. Okay, budget update. Everything is the same, but I am going to still try to be frugal in my grocery spending. If you're going to do any special challenges or anything, or you have budgets ups and downs, make sure you note that here so you can really think about that as you go in to your planning. Okay, once that's all planned out, then I'm gonna go ahead and flip to this monthly budget. I'm gonna, I left it blank. I usually always have it filled for you, but I'm gonna show you this is kind of where I start. I'm going to list out all of my bills that I have um, put on that budget overview that I started when I started planning my whole year. When I set up my whole year, I had a budget overview. Let me show you really quick here right by my yearly right my yearly has all of my special things and then my budget overview has all of my bills that come automatically auto paid out of this checking account and then I have a automatic auto pay out of this checking account because I have two so whatever you have go ahead and print accordingly and make sure you know what your bills are when they're coming out how much they're coming out and how they're set up okay because I don't pull out my you know, I don't pull, pull out my bills. I go ahead and leave them in there and make sure that they're paid, you know, right off the bat so I'm never missing anything. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these out real quick and I'll bring you right back. All right. So those are all filled out now. We are in the month of December. I'll put up here. Um, and my normal pay is 11,200. And I just, I want again, I always say, cause I get comments every time about how much I make. And I just want you to know, I have budgeted all walks of life from just making $1,500 a month for many, many, many years to 4,000 for many years, to working really hard over the last 20 years to finally get to this. And so I just want you to know to keep pressing forward. You'll get there, plug in the numbers, the budget works. That's what really has made me successful in the first place is that I've taken the time out to go ahead and plan out my month and spend and save my money accordingly. Okay, so now that I have all this planned out, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just label what I'm spending and budgeting in these areas. So I do a percentage, so I'm doing 12, 32, for my tithing groceries. Now, last month I went ahead and I spent about 500 because I was doing a eat out of my pant pantry, no spend challenge. And I'm not gonna be quite as frugal, but I'm still gonna be pretty frugal. So I'm gonna do $600 out of my gro for my groceries, which for, um, I have four boys living at home and my husband and myself. So six of, six of us at home and so it's a little bit of a stretch, but I like the challenge and trying to be frugal and save money. For gasoline, and I'm gonna do 750, and then my mortgage is 2450, and my dyslexia school that my eldest son goes to is 795, and then donations, I do 75. That goes to like a Bible translation and also to an organization called Breaking the Change that combats sex trafficking. It's an amazing organization here in the Central Valley of California. I just, they're amazing. I love to support them. I'll link them below. If you're looking for a good organization to support, there is a real huge epidemic in the United States with sex trafficking. Okay. Cable, we're gonna do 104, subscriptions, I have them at 80, and they're multiple subscriptions. I just clump them together on my bills. I take care of them at the beginning of the month. I leave that money in there. For those of you like who have subscriptions that come out maybe multiple times a month, I just make sure it's fully funded at the beginning of the month, so no matter when it comes out, I don't have to worry about it. Rugby is $100 a month. My Capital One Electric is 250. And so for those of you that are new, I pay off credit cards and then I put them in the safe and then I put something on auto pay on it. So my electric uh, electricity is paid by my Capital One card in the very beginning of the month, usually the first or second. And then one week later, my auto pay from my checking account pays that bill. So it pays the 250. So I never accrue any um, interest whatsoever, but my credit is being maintained and grown and my 
you know, utilization is there so that I have, you know, good credit for things that maybe I need to do in the future. All right, my phone bill is 267. And then my student loan, we're looking at 500. And car payment, 313. My ECU credit card, 200. And that is actually the debt snowball that I'm working on right now but I still pay a minimum payment and then I add the debt snowball to it. So it's just, you know, this will take care of the interest payment and the debt snowball will take care of the rest. All right, city or insurance that that one pays, that credit card's paid off and it pays my insurance. That's 320, my car insurance to be exact. Home Depot's 100, Kohl's is 125, my solar is 169. My car wash is 32. My Gab Kids phone is 40. That is the best kids phone. I'm just completely biased. I love it. Pest control, I do 40 a month, but it comes out bi-monthly of 80. My easy loan is 115. Sally Mae that I split with my daughters, 250. Amazon is 150. My water and trash at 130. My security system is at 104 and then my gardener's at 120. Okay, so once I have all those listed, and again, I will come back to this on my closeout and I'll put my actual numbers and see how I did. My total income is 11,000 projected and hopefully I can do some side hustles or some other things to get a little extra money. I'm always looking for opportunities like that where I can, you know, just pay off my debt more quickly, fully fund my sinking funds more quickly, things like that. And I'm going to add my total expenses really quick and then we will go ahead and figure out what we have left over. All right. Oh man, that was quite a bit. I'm going to drink a cup of my coffee here, a sip here. That is always like, you know, uh, that's, you know, the fact that I have that many bills. I am looking to refine this. I get often like I've been told like, oh my gosh, your core amount of bills are really high. I do include my groceries and gasoline in my bills. I do that so that all of the essentials are taken care of. Of course, I want my debt snowball and my cash envelopes and my sinking funds to be funded. But if all, you know, things are lost, if I have that core amount paid for, then my family is you know, secure and taken care of. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and put the 9,411. And this is also why you should be in, you know, if like you're like me and I'm in debt, looking to pay off that debt and lower that core amount all the time, right? And seeing what we can do, cutbacks and things like that. I'm always looking for, for ways to do that. All right. Looks like I have a leftover of $1,789. Now, I'm going to take that and put it on the next monthly budget sheet so that I can now work out how to plan out my cash envelopes for the next month. So my leftover amount is $1,789. All right. Um, when I started my snowball, I think I started at about $40 and it's grown and grown over the years. And so um, now that I'm here, my debt snowball is about $1,200 a month. And actually for the last few months, I was able to um, supersede that. Let me show you here. And that, so that's, so I always try to throw extra money in it. So anything that's extra, I'm going to go ahead and put towards my debt payment. So let's see what happened. Okay. Yeah. The month before I got a bonus. Looks like I put extra there. So see, and this just kind of rocket launches my debt payoff and hopefully will lower that core amount that I have to spend every single month, um, from, you know, things in my life that popped up and created some chaos, right? Making sure you have something you're growing, maybe a piece of paper, tracking your debt, something you can print off some freebies. I know online at Etsy and on Pinterest, there's some, you know, debt trackers, maybe find something that motivates you and keeps you going on your debt payoff journey. Um, I know that this has been super helpful for me. I need that visual kind of tangible thing to keep me motivated and going. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and just map out my cash. Uh, I'm going to write out my cash envelopes and my sinking funds really quickly. And then we'll talk about how those are broken down.
Okay, so now we are all set to start planning out our cash envelopes. And if you don't know which, you know, your categories should be and how to figure those out, I'm going to link a video above of where it talks about sinking funds, savings challenges, how to map those out, how to think about those categories and plan for the new year. Or if your budget changes, I would uh, consider reassessing, making sure you have the right categories. I know that I changed up some of my categories and kept some exactly the same. So that was a fun kind of process to go through. Okay. So my dead snowball is going to stay the same. And if I had any extra, I could put it here. But if it's just the 1200, then 1200 is what my total for my debt snowball is projected to be right now. Now this is important. So I have it in this order because I feel like your debt snowball is probably more important than your cash envelopes of eating out and date night, right? We need to take care of the essentials. So the bills were taken care of already and what was left over is the 1789 and now you're going to go through these kind of categories. So no matter how much is left over, I would just suggest, you know, taking care of the first things before you move on to the you know, second and third. And I do know when things are tight, like I said, my debt snowball started out at 40 and I think I started out with like only having 200 left over. So I would put 40 in my debt snowball and then I put like, I'd have three categories here and I do five, 10, 15. I think I had two categories here. Oh no, actually, sorry, I started with one, which was just an emergency fund. So, you know, I think that um, you've got to just start where you're at. It doesn't need to look just like mine, but plug in what your numbers are and put in your categories. But I'm just going to show you how I do it so that you can kind of see how I think and plan about it. And hopefully that'll help you in your journey as well. All right. So with the 1789 left over, I'm going to, you know, minus whatever my snowball is. I have 589 left over now. I'm putting that right here, 589. So I can think about, okay, I want some money left over here, but what can I put in here? that is going to be enough money for me to survive on and which one's the most important. So I always go to what's most important and to me, uh, childcare is the most important. So I'm going to do 60. I know that I really would like to have 60 in there. And then the next you know, thing that I know I'm going to spend money on. So I need to make it a priority is my eating out. And so, uh, then date night, I'm going to make it about 60 here. I don't need very much for kids extra. So I'll just do 15 and spending. I'll just do 30 in case I forget something, but I don't need to be a big spender in December. We have enough Christmas stuff going on. It'll have its own money. We'll leave maybe 30 also in this fun and then 15 for miscellaneous. Oops. I forgot about it. Now when planning this, I know I'm cashed up in three times. So if you can see, they're all in breakdowns of three, right? So I can do 20, 40, 60, 5, 10, 15, right? 10, 20, 30. However many you do, it might be a good idea to make sure your denominations match so that when you go to the bank to pull the money out, it's going to be easier for you to cash stuff, right? So just some food for thought there. Um, this, let's see, I, this should equal, it's very similar to what I always do. So it should equal about 300. Let me see. Yes, $300. So this total right here is going to be $300. So now if I take this leftover amount of 589, I'm going to subtract the $300. I have 289 left over. So we're gonna go right here, the $289. And now I have that to think about when I'm doing my sinking funds. So I kind of usually do about the same amount in all these categories. I'm going to do 30 for my car maintenance and we'll do 30 for haircuts. Moving, I'll just do 15. Pet care, I'm gonna do 60. Business expenses, let's just do 15. Health, I'm gonna think I'll just do 15 as well. Subscriptions, we'll keep it at 15 and then my hubby will give him 30 for spending. Like I have spending here, this would be his spending money. These are some of the things that I've kind of swapped in the new year. Um, so just things to think about what works for you. Okay. So now I have 289. Oh, let's figure out how much money I just chose to allot to it. Okay. $210. So now I have the 289 minus 210. And I have $79 left over. That's $79. I'm going to do right here on scratchers, I, which I use for birthdays and savings challenges. So basically I'm just gonna, 
I'm gonna send it to Carrie's down. I'm gonna use the full $79 right here. So that's $79 total, which should leave me at zero afterwards. So again, after bills is $17.89. My debt snowball is $1,200. My cash envelopes were $300. My sinking funds ended up to be 210 and my savings challenges, I gave the rest left over. Now, this will, hopefully, if I did it right, give us zero. And the first time that I did it, I definitely had to finesse it. Yep, zero, which is exactly what you want. You want all your money to be told where it's going um, all the way down to the very last cent because... Uh, otherwise, we tend as humans to find excuses to spend it on other things, okay? The first time I did it, I did have to play with the numbers a little bit, um, but as you go along, you should become a little more refined as you go, making sure that all your dollars have homes. Now, what will happen from here is um, when I get my first paycheck, number one, this one right here, uh, let's go back to the beginning calendar. When I get this paycheck, Number one, I will go ahead and go to the bank. I am going to pull out, um, I'm gonna pull out a, a third of this and a third of this, which I will have planned before I went to the bank right here and breaking it all down, which if you haven't seen me do a budget by paycheck, um, it should be coming up next Saturday. Go ahead and follow me along um, this budget journey for this Saturday, sorry. Um, to see how I go ahead and do that. But really, I just break it into a third because I, that's how I do my budgets. I do three cash stuffings. So I would pull $30 for eating out and $20 for date night and $5 for kids spending and so on and so forth. So this makes it really easy for me to be able to know how much I'm pulling from each paycheck and how, I'm, how much I'm budgeting from each paycheck, okay? So that is the monthly budget with me. I have it all planned out and I'm ready to go now and I know what I'm considering and things that are coming up and how I'm gonna spend my money. Make sure you get yourself all planned out. And again, if you don't know how to set up your sinking funds or what categories you should and shouldn't have, I will put a video up here on how to do that. And if you are brand new to cash stuffing and you need to just kind of break it down, make sure that you watch this video on how to do cash stuffing very basic video to show you how to do that. All right, as always, I want you to find joy in your journey and I'll see you next time.